Yeah, you wanna know what's crazy? It was crazy though, like how we even made the old connection. My OA, oh, yeah, he was making calls before, but I ain't never hitting. I forgot the hitting when we got down here for real, for real, you feel me? So the whole situation, I already knew. I was telling my youngest, I'm like, yo, like that shit had to go that way. Cause we, we come from this shit, we understand all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, at the end of the day, we talking about we showing content. We know niggas be trolling. They, we could have been on the joint, dirty not slide for Vine, all this other stuff, how the weird shit niggas be on the internet, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, our whole joint was like, we from Philly, you know, we come from this shit like yo we neck and neck with y'all every year you know what i'm saying so it's like we just try to get the whole like a real perspective and not what the media portray from the people are like you know what they go what they going through here what they think the solution is and shit like that because we do a lot of work with the kids back in philly and all that okay, not two yeah. o'clock in the yeah, morning yeah, though yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. no for sure that for sure that no, fact, 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 fact. Yeah, yeah for sure, though, but it ain't no foul, though. You know, I return, you know what I'm saying? You got the camera, it's, it's straight, ain't no wrong with it, you know what I'm saying? It's still the same. Hey, hey, hey what's your name, man? I ain't even, I ain't even catch the joint. We ran in a lotto. Yeah, for sure, my name is Duke. You need Duke, Duke. All right, say that, say that. It's, it's money, Duke. <laughs> That's money, Duke. Yeah, for sure. Hey, that's a nice-ass camera. Go look me up on um, YouTube, though. Maybe you can shoot something for me or something. Well, no, let, let's, let's make the connect. <laughs> 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 Let's make the connect. Hey yo, hey, 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 look, like we gonna we gonna get your mad from Big Bro and we gonna tap in, we gonna see you on Instagram. You can tap into our movement, we'll be doing all that, inshallah. We 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 lock in. Right, inshallah. I say that about this. Uh, and I'm showing you about this. No, I'm sure it's hard. I like him. I love y'all. I like you. All right, I come on, get this. He confirmed our faith in so many Mashallah. different ways, you know what I'm saying? In so many different ways. Like you said, like, like really, this was really the power of the woman, bro, right? It was the power of the woman getting this joint back. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the way we reacted was everything. Like, we was like, we stayed calm. Yeah, we left something. We had, had patience. We like, may Allah allow us to get this camera back. And me went about it the right way because it could have went super left. Right, we right. Stayed calm. At 2 in the morning. Exactly. All, the way, oh. <laughs> all the way left at 2 in the morning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Allah just blessed y'all, right? So y'all yeah. definitely yeah. blessed, right? Oh, I, I really feel good to even do that for y'all because I mm, see yeah, y'all got a dean and y'all got strong dean that know it all over y'all. So yeah, I'm and I, and I there, bro. It's a brotherhood. Y'all my brothers. I never seen y'all, but I'm glad to see y'all now, right? Yeah, and and I, I will do it again for y'all a million yeah, times, yeah. bro. For yeah, brothers yeah. I don't know that's not like y'all. Long oh, they Muslim, man. We're going to go yeah. all out for Muslim. I'm going to tear Chicago down about Muslim, yeah. bro. And, and you know so, what I mean? As I said in this land, like a calamity, sometimes when calamity happens, it can be a good thing. That's why we stay patient, like man. We locked in with y'all. We talking now. I know who you are, so I'm the line. So you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why we stay patient in this. Y'all with the convention? What y'all was selling at the convention? They got some fun. We just showing we got the uh, yeah, we got, got the black seat. This is a shot podcast, man. We we love to have you here, man. Appreciate you for being here. Man, tell us about yourself, man. 
Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Alhamdulillah, I'm Sadiq Ali. I'm from the Shack Town, Chicago. Born and raised, Alhamdulillah. Uh, come from a small little location on the south side of Chicago called Motown. Uh, yeah, that's our, that's that's the beginning of my, my journey right there in that Motown. So, inshallah, that's what we're going to really definitely focus on. How was your upbringing? My upbringing was smooth. Alhamdulillah, my mom tried to do the best that she could do with a situation that was at hand. But you got to understand that, you know, mom's working maybe eight hours, uh, eight hours a day, six days a week at the pay seven, eight hundred dollars rent. You know, it's going to be really rough. And it's definitely been the oldest son. Uh, you know, so you got to be able to do things there to uplift and help mom out. So it was either, you know, school or, you know, go to the streets. And um, I had to, I choose the streets, you know, I choose the street life. And um, I learned a lot from the streets. I won't take anything from the streets. A lot put me in the streets to be able to understand the trials and tribulations that I deal with today. The humility life. You say you're the oldest of uh your brothers and sisters. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, four of us, so I'm the oldest of our brothers and sisters, my brothers and sisters, you know, so. Alhamdulillah, and um, I try my best to be the best that I can be, even right now that I got, even that I'm Muslim and I'm walking a straight path, my whole family followed me, you know, so. It was like I was the leader of the family, mashallah. Okay. When you say you jumped off, you kind of jumped off the porch and went towards the street, what age would you say? Man, I was like 14, 15 years old, you know, um, the streets was live then, you know. At that point, we was talking, we, we, we got to be talking about 94, 95, you know. It was live, the streets was everything at that point. And uh, it was fun to do what we was doing in Tulumacy. And uh, I jumped in into it, you know what I mean? I did. But uh, I'm really live. So, in Motown, tell us about Motown. Well, Motown is really one of like the biggest uh, lands in the city of Chicago. I can out and about for that, right? We got one of the biggest neighborhoods that were all on the one regime that, you know, I mean, we was all on the one name. It was Blackstones. So, it was always Motown from all the way from, I think it's Hermitage all the way back to Lowe. You know what I mean? As far as uh, 49th all the way to 55th Street. You know, so it's all our own little town, it was our own little family. And, um, you know, and we tried to do our best ability to stay together, but it was rough, man, living in Motown. It was, it was really rough. That's, it was really rough little land. Well, we made the best out of that situation. You know what I mean? We were taught from a young age, you know what I mean? Under the Blackstone thing, you had to be taught uh, order. You know, you know, one no bunk, one no going to school, get caught going to school, you know, you got to get violated, you know, it wasn't that or that, you know, the Blackstones definitely pushed order. So you said it wasn't, it wasn't, just to be clear, you said it wasn't no not going to school or going to school? It wasn't no not going to school. You had to go to school if you wanted to be a Blackstone, you know, they pushed that. And um, you get caught not going to school, you know what I mean, you're going to get your little, your little butt paddled. So, you know what I mean, you had to deal with that, but you also got to deal with you know, a group of people that's trying to keep children and everybody else in order, and you're trying to generate finance at the same time. And um, so you, it's, it's a lot to deal with, you know what I mean? So you gotta really balance it out. So what's one of the major misconceptions of people uh, that they, when they think about black stones or something to that nature, when they think about the organization you're speaking about, it, well, they, one of the main things miss things, they thinking that, you know, when they think of Blackstone, they probably think of terrorism. You know, a lot of people say that, but I wouldn't even say it was a terrorism. I would just say it was a strong organization that was trying to help us at a point to be better in the situation that was at hand. You know, black people was going through a lot of things and being able to start to organize black people was really, was really hard. But we did it, you know what I mean? And um, uh, it was, um, it was beautiful. You know what I mean? If you would give us an opportunity and a chance to be beautiful, we would have showed you more than beautiful. You know what I mean? But this is what was dealt to us, drugs and guns. And at this time, you know, it was everything. Money was everything back at that point. So we sabotaged ourselves with money. You feel like money took 
a major, played a major part. Money played a major part in everything that goes on in this country. You but know? in the destruction or, or the, the, the misorganization. Of Absolutely, because you got to understand the way that we're getting money is by destroying ourselves. I'm getting money by selling my uncle, and my cousin, uh, my father, your mother. We're getting it by selling them drugs. We're selling narcotics to get money so we don't see the effect and it's destroying us. But we're just barely gaining off the finance. So we're chasing that money, but we're not seeing what it's doing to us mentally, um, physically, emotionally, everything. I mean, we're not looking at that and blind about the money. We really don't care at that point, to that time. Until you become aware, you know what I mean? Until you take your eyes and see, you know what I mean? And I, and I was able to see when I took out of Islam, man. So, alhamdulillah, that I can able to see that. Now I can see the destruction that we was all, it was always a destruction from the beginning. So you, you kind of rose up in the ranks of the organization. Mm-hmm, alhamdulillah. Yeah, I, um, even as a youngster, even with the organization, I used to study the lessons. And um, I always wanted to be different because, you know, you got people that tell you something, but it's not really what it is. So I want to know what the laws is. I want to know what the lessons is. And I studied them myself. And to be able to study those lessons to make me be able to be the man that I am today. You know, upright, independent, and fearless. That's what we wanted to do. And that's what we was taught to do, you know, to be men. First, as Blackstone, they taught us to be men. You know, we didn't really, we never, we never said that we didn't have emotions, but we didn't deal with them. You know, I mean, we put emotions to the side when it came to a lot of things. And when you do that, you take emotions out of things, you can rationalize and make a better decision on certain things. You know, and just to make a, a messed up decision where I'm not dealing with it in an emotional way, I'm gonna make an emotional decision. But if I don't deal with that. How can I make an emotional decision? I'm going to make a right decision. I'm going, this is what's best. You know what I mean? Even if it's not best for me. But it's what's best for the situation. It's what's best for the nation. And that was one thing that Blackstone gave me. Um, I'm going to say a name. I'm going to say some names for you. And then you give us a expound on those names. Okay. What I'll say. You man will lead Jeff Ford. Iman Malik Jafar, I believe that he's a beautiful individual. I believe that he's a wise person, definitely with um, wisdom, a whole lot of wisdom. You know what I mean? I think he's definitely um, one of the brothers that need to be looked at and focused upon on how to better situations instead of looking to him as a terrorist or one that's destroying because he really has a lot of wisdom. And you got to be able to give credit where credit's due. If this one man can be able to put these many people together, have them organized, and teaching them how to be men, teaching them how to learn about God, and they all young, you know what I mean? And um, they had put that first. So when it comes to him, yeah, you know, he's a he's a, he's an outstanding person in my book. Um, I have talked, listened to him on the phone. I never had a we. I mean, I was had a conversation, but we never had a one on one. I've listened to him talk and listen to the things that he says, and it makes nothing but sense. And now, even with him, he sees that Islam is way better than... I heard him say that... I understand that, you heard him say this over the phone. I heard him say that, you know, we need to focus more on our Islam, you know what I mean? We need to uh, follow the, the, the Prophet Muhammad, you know what I mean? That's the number one key to graduate. We need to do that, you know what I mean? We black brothers to focus on Muhammad and... Uh, Islam, that's the number one thing. And that always stuck with me when he said that, you know. But um, any, anybody out of sight is out of mind. One thing about um, the brother, he still, I believe that he's getting um, good intel. People telling him good things, but I don't think they're telling him to a way, to a degree of what it really is. You know, so. Uh, I mean, you say he's not getting enough the information of what's, what what's really is. going on into the streets right now. He's, you know, you got to understand, he's been locked up so long, he's probably still stuck, stuck in a mindset where, oh, it's still like it was when I was on location. His brother's still doing the same way. And I remember hearing him say on the phone, like, you got to treat a gangbanger like you do a dope fiend. You got to be around him. You got to be able to be with him. You can't just let him wander off. You got to hold him, keep him up, show him different things. That's the way that you're going to change him. You know what I mean? And um, 
that was that's a true fact. You know, what I mean? in order to change the condition of a people, you got to change the whole condition. You got to make them change themselves. In order to do that, I got to lead by example. I can tell you that I'm doing good. Oh, yeah, I'm Sadiq. I'm over here. I got a couple businesses. I went from Motown. Now I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Oh, well, man, how can I do that? Huh? So I got to live that. You know, I just can't say it. I got to live it. I got to show them that. So, and that's that's one of the main things that I focus on as me, me and who I am. I can take nothing away from anybody else, but what I'm focused on is person is living by example. You know what I mean? Pushing the truth of the matter, despite outside of Blackstone, outside of everything. I'm worshiping God at this point. So what would you say for many people that's like, as far as the Blackstone, they represent Blackstone all over America. Right. Absolutely. Went to, Cal went to Compton, uh, seeing the brothers in the jungle. We're beautiful brothers. Uh, 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 we, we, you know, they got some brothers out of Jersey and New York. Beautiful brothers. Uh, Memphis, to, you know, throughout Tennessee. The question, what, you know, the message that, as far as them, how do you, what's the message that, that should be properly given to them? Because many people will say, you know, they, they, they may know the literature, know the words, the yeah, lingo, yeah. and they go to different places and say, "Well, this is what we stand for," or "This is what this is promulgated to." What 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 message should be clear and understood that, well, that well, nobody could get around? Well, with me, honestly, with me, I would say that my message would be to them would be that you know, Blackstone Blackstone was like um, a school, you know. So you graduate out of grammar school to go to high school. Okay, so I've graduated from Blackstone and to be able to come to Al Islam, and I think that's what we all need to do. We need to focus more on the truth of the matter, and that is a lot. You know what I mean? We have to return to our Lord. Blackstone gave us something and made us men upright, independent, and fearless. And I can never take that away. I'm gonna die, Blackstone. I come from the tribe of Blackstone. I'm gonna die that way. But I'm gonna be a Muslim over everything. You know, and once you put that in perspective, all of everything else is gonna make sense to you. I promise you. What I hear you saying, and just correct me if I'm wrong, is that you saying that the re your, the religion of the people, the religion, you say Al Islam and Allah, should be the, the focal point and everything should wrap around it. Whether you Blackstone, whether you whatever track whatever you, track come, you from, come from, it should wrap around it. Absolutely. Now. Nothing's more important right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever Allah has designed for you in your life, He's created for you. 50,000 years before the earth was he ever created, he created that for you, okay? To be able to be into a place that you are today. The pieces of the puzzle is going to always come together because Allah is the one that's creating the puzzle. So it's going to come together. There's no if, ands, or but about it. Allah says that whoever I shall guide, no one shall misguide. This is a known fact, true. So if we got that, we got Blackstone and winning us, we got G's, we got B's, all that winning us, but in reality, what are we really holding on? You know, but if you come over to Al Islam and you get acquainted with Allah and with your Lord, you have something to hold on. You have something. You have something to look forward to. You have this. And I think that's number one important for everybody. Everybody. All humanity. This is important for them. What would you say? We talking about Chicago dealing with a lot of bloodshed. With a lot of bloodshed, it's a lot of bodies on the ground, and and I hear you talking about Islam and the Muslims and this. What is what is the position of what's going on in the city of Chicago amongst these young people killing each other, and then on the other side, what's the Muslims saying? What what the Mus what are the Muslims doing to help the situation? Or is it is it even a Muslim problem? No, absolutely, it's a Muslim problem. That's number one. Definitely a Muslim problem. But the youngsters are missing right now. The youngsters are missing that they don't have nothing to grab hold to. There's nothing. There's nothing. You know, these people, you know, and I'm not bashing anybody, religion, Christian, you know, whatever they want to do, but nobody has anything. They're not grabbing to anything. Nobody's believing in Jesus anymore. You know what I mean? They don't believe Jesus Christ. They're not taking Christianity and running with it. They're not taking anything. So, the fact of righteousness, godliness, is all out of the equation. This is what's missing. This is what's missing in the youngsters. And um, as a Muslim, I think it's our duty, any Muslim, it's our duty to go out there and push these young brothers. Don't matter if they're getting high, they smoking weed, let them do that. So what? 
Okay, whatever it is. Okay, they want to smoke weed, they want to get high, they want to chase girls. Don't tell them that they can't come because they're doing these things. Allow them to have that. This is not, this is a lot of guys we want to get, but we got to introduce them to this. Grab a hold to the rope of Allah by all means. Keep smoking, keep doing whatever you're doing, but grab a hold to this rope of Allah. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that all that other stuff won't fall off because now you got to something to look forward to. They have nothing to look forward to. This is why it's mayhem, you know? We all, as black people, man, we've been through traumatic. We, we, we've been traumatized for over 450 years. And we still dealing with that today. And that's what you're seeing right now. You know what I mean? You got, honestly, you got to understand that you got white children that's growing up into mid-class homes that live on the north side or not the urban community at four years old, I key. They are taught 3,000 words more than your four-year-old. That means when your child graduates out of eighth grade, this child is five years old, four years old, he knows more words than your eighth grade year student or your old student do. You see what I'm saying? This is a problem. This is the this is the major problem for us. You know what I mean? So we gotta look at that. They deal with that. We gotta look at that. They don't know any better. So we gotta show them compassion and we gotta show them love. We gotta be out there and tell them that. Continue doing what you're doing, but grab on the rope of Allah, and everything else gonna smooth itself out. Because Allah is the best of planners. Allah gonna Allah changes hearts. So that's 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 the number one thing that's going on in city and all over the United States of America. All we over got, the world. This is what I ask you. We have bloodshed on the streets of Chicago right now. Mm -hmm. What are the Muslims doing? The Muslims? We're not doing anything that we, 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 so much that we should be doing. Me, you, us as a whole, we should be doing more than uh, we just sitting down not doing nothing. We just sitting and watching it. What make us better? You know what I mean? We're no better, you know, at all. You know, and I remember I read a, a, a hadith where they said that Allah destroyed the righteous man of the land. And the angel asked the man, why would destroy the righteous man of the land? Start with him first because he righteous down, he ain't spreading the word. You know what I mean? He ain't pushing that. So uh, we, we, the Muslims, man, we, we are really in bad shape. And um, I think that um, a lot of this that goes on in the city, because we got the best religion in, in, in that is. We got the best profit that is. So what's our excuse that we ain't hitting the streets and pushing these shorties and doing something with them and making it work? What, finance? What's all type of ways to generate finance? And if we show the shorty them that this ways to generate different finance then, and yeah, see it, uh, we gotta lead by example. And I think we fail as that, as Muslims. And I start with myself first. So, you know, you have a strong relationship with a lot of guys in the street. Yeah. They they have they respect you. Um, they hold you dear. I I even hear a brother Kevin Gates shot you out in songs, different songs. Yeah, that's my brother. When, when, when Kevin Gates come to town, he meets with you. What are those conversations like? Oh, man, it's just, we, we, we don't really talk about that. We family, you know? It's not really a big thing with me when I see him. He's like, that's my brother, you know? That, that is really my brother. And um, we just have simple conversations, you know? Hey, how you doing? How's the family? You know, I'm gonna miss you, you know? We joke, we crack jokes. We have a normal, you know, uh, brotherly relationship. How did you meet him? Well, um, he was in the, Kevin Gates was in the penitentiary in Illinois, and um, he had reached out to some brothers, you know what I mean, and um, came across our table, you know what I mean, and he reached out and he wrote him, he was writing him, he was Muslim, he wrote him a strive, and he contacted us back, you know what I mean, uh, so humbly life, you know, that was, um, Beautiful, you know. So it's, it's, we built the relationship off of that. So we always hear him speak about. I mean, last he talked about BPSN. Is he a part of the organization? Yeah, that's our brother. That's our brother. Yeah, um, he's a Muslim. You know what I mean? He come from the tribe of Blackstone, and he's a Muslim. I don't, you know, he's not. We not. I'm not a part of the organization. No, more. I'm not no stone. I just come from the tribe of Blackstones, you know. I'm not a Blackstone. So just to be clear, because we hear him saying this. Yeah, he's with us.
Right. He's with us. I, 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 I stamped that. He's with us. So, so, how did, you know, was this, was this before he went to prison or what would you say? Um, he, he, yeah, I would say well, definitely before he went to prison, he was always trying to, you know, get close to the movement and uh, understand the things. And um, he just, you know, picked it up. You know, when he came home, he got closer to some real brothers that he honestly didn't know that he could trust. That mean, you know, genuinely that we didn't want anything from him. You know what I mean? And he was pushing his dean and, you know, he grabbed hold of that tribe and he fell in love with it. Like I said, it's nothing wrong with Black Stones. It's nothing. But, you know, Islam is much more better. So Black Stone and Islam is two different things. Totally. Yeah, explain it. Um, Blackstone is what built us from the streets. We come from the streets. Blackstone is a street organization. Islam is created from the, was created by Allah, the Lord of the worlds. That's the big difference. Um, there's no comparison. You know what I mean? Uh, when it comes to Blackstone, there's nothing compared to Islam. But you could be a Blackstone animal. No, no, no. Don't get me twisted. You know, we can't, we can't serve two masters. You know, I'm with Allah. I come from the tribe of Blackstone. You know what I mean? That's where I come from. I'm going to die of Blackstone because I come from that tribe, you know what I mean? The Prophet Muhammad come from a tribe, you know what I mean? He died from that tribe, but he died a Muslim with Islam, you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, you can't be a Blackstone. I'm not a Blackstone for the record. I am not a Blackstone. I am a Muslim. I'm an ex-Blackstone. I just come from the tribe of Blackstone. I am a Muslim. When you say, when you say I'm going to die of Blackstone, it's, 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 I'm from the tribe. It's like you were, it's like, you know, you you were you were born a part of something, you know. What I mean, I was a part of this. You know, what I mean, it's the tribe that I come from. So of course, when they put me in the ground, I came from that tribe. That tribe introduced me to Islam. I could take nothing from that. I got to give credit where it's credit is due. It brought me to the man who I am today. The to worship a lot, the way that I worship a lot, and alhamdulillah, I thank Allah for allowing me to go through that to be able to be the person I am now. When you see some of the things that are, you know, some of the Muslims in the entertainment world, mm -hmm. when you see some of the things, what do you think? A lot, there's a lot of Muslims in the entertainment world. Yeah, I'm really lot. What advice? What advice would you give them in being in this world? Keep a lot. Keep a lot first. Keep a lot in the equation. Keep a don't don't lose. The sight of Allah. Don't allow the finance. Don't allow the fame or the glory, the lights to take the light and the glow away from the main focus and that which Allah. Enjoy yourself. Live your life. You know what I mean? But push that deen and represent it the right way. You know, I would say to the brothers that's in the industry that's Muslims. If they, you know, brother, you know, if you're going to have a, if you're going to be intoxicated and drink and you represent Islam, Man, just don't, man, take it and do it somewhere else. Represent Islam the right way. I'm not telling you, you're a grown man, do what you want to do. But don't be on the radio, you know, with your drinks and your alcohol. But then you want to say, like, the high the law. That's not a good representation of us. That's not a good representation of your Lord. You know, so that's my, my, my message to the brothers. You know, represent a lot. And if you're going to do it, just do it in secret. You know what I mean? Do your stuff in privacy. And I guarantee you, just the cold-blooded part about it. If you do it in privacy for the sake of a lot, a lot going to bless you for that. Because, you know, that's something that you got a, a vice on. A lot created you. I didn't. You know, so he knows you better than I know you. I can't tell you the relationship that you have with Allah. You can't tell me the relationship that I have with Allah. We have our own personal relationship with the Lord of the worlds. So, to the brothers in the industry, better y'all situation by representing us better. And not, you know, representing us with liquor in one hand. Then turn around, you want to make salat. No, we can't do it like that. You can't. We can't make a lot. Imagine you allowing... A lot of look bad. You know, people be like, oh, yeah, I can be Muslim. I can drink. I can do this and that. No, you know what I mean? Don't do that. Don't be Muslim. You know what I mean? We can drink and then we do it in private. And I, I'm guessing. I don't, you shouldn't do it, period. We don't promote that. But that's something that you want to do. That's a relationship with you and your Lord. You make Toba to your Lord. Repent to your Lord in a form that you make see how. But represent your Lord when you're in the public, in the public view. And I think that you'll be more successful than you could ever be in life. You were a very uh, intricate part in the funeral happening, the funeral of uh, King Von. Alhamdulillah. Um, did you know him beforehand? Did you have you met him beforehand? 
Yeah, I met Von on a couple occasions. I met Von on a couple occasions. Real smooth, real smooth little dude. A real, you know, I really took a little liking him. And uh, he was trying to push this dean, you know what I mean, to the best of his ability to acknowledge. And I had talked to him maybe a couple of days before he passed away. He was in L.A. And um, I was like, Slam Lake. He's like, man, I really don't know, you know, um, the proper way to say, I said, well, say, well, Lake Salam, you know? And he's like, well, Lake Salam, you know what I mean? I said, man, look, you gotta keep alive first. You know what I mean? I'm proud of what you're doing. You're definitely making a, you know, you're making noise and you're doing a good job what you're doing, but keep alive in the equation. He's like, man, I got you. I'm, so I'm gonna do that. So Kane Bond was Muslim? I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say, I never gave him a Shahada. I never know of anybody who gave him a Shahada, but I knew he, I seen him in the masjid on numerous occasions. So he was he was coming to the mask yet. But I don't I think the brother, uh, his uncle Hassan, I wanna say, you know, don't quote me on this, but I wanna say that yeah, that he was Muslim. I would love to say that. I would hope that there was, but I don't know. You know, that's just my don't quote me on that, but I think Hassan definitely pushed that dean on. Okay. Uh look there. Uh -huh. I'm really lying. Beautiful person. You've been around him? Yeah, we talk. Me and the Dirk, we have a um, a nice relationship. Hump did he lie? You know, was on the phone, we talk. He's a he's a he's a um, he's an amazing person, man. He's a really good guy. Nothing bad to say about that guy at all, man. He's he's just Dirk, you know. He's just when you know outside of entertainment, he's just you know a smooth kid, man. A beautiful guy. I think that a lot of, a lot of people. Um, I think. different roles they play. And sometimes those roles bleed into each other. The Chicago and the trauma that happens here can often challenge a person into what hat they have to wear. In the house I'm like this, amongst my friends I'm like this, but amongst the world I have to be like this. Okay. So this may be where you see my other side, my aggression. Right. When you think of all the stuff they've said about like a King Bond, about murders that possibly happened, I'm not here to say this took place, but murders that possibly happened that he was involved in, he's not the only one. In Chicago, we got a plethora right. of young brothers that have made some major mistakes, death defying mistakes, or, or you know, even on purpose they went and they did some things. Mm -hmm. What advice, what advice as an older, seasoned uh, brother, what would you give them? Well, first, you know. And what, first of all, where do you think that comes from? Well, I think. Where do you think that level? Aggression comes from but specifically the number of deaths in Chicago are if you take LA and New York and mm -hmm. put them together, Chicago, Chicago oh, itself beat both of them. Beats both of them and it's smaller the population wise than both of them separate. Right. Well, first of all, number one thing you know you said about Vine and whatever he have going on, first of all, you know. A man is what they know, not what they told, you know what I mean? So I don't want to put anything that somebody said he done or didn't do. What I know him of to be a bright, cool kid, you know, rapper, you know what I mean? So I'm never going to say whatever he done, a man is what they know, not what they told. I have no idea what he done or how he done it or when he done it. If you ask me, he didn't do anything. Um, to my ability, all I know him to was a bright little child. So I don't know anything about Whatever they be, people the rumors that they like to talk about and put on, we ain't gonna ever support that. You know, you know it's ironic you call him a child. You yeah, he's young, like, young, yeah, young, young. They all children to me. I think. No, I understand. And and, and 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 people often don't refer to him as this, right? Yeah. But I remember when Six Nine was going through this case, and they kept saying he was he was just a kid. He's just a kid. Mm -hmm. I'm like, why, what's the difference between him and some of our other brothers who were 
in our eyes, maybe just a kid too. Right. Um, so it's ironic that you refer to him as a child when I when some of us understand you haven't reached maturity, even though you may be you're a man, but you still got a lot of development. You still got a lot of development mentally, right. spiritually. Absolutely. Right. So the growth is there now. I I just want to acknowledge that we have to start allowing our young young brothers to be understanding that they may look a certain way, but they still need some yeah, guidance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I hear, a lot of guidance. That's what's I, not here now. Even I, even I hear what you say when you talk about the organization in Motown, there was guidance amongst these different organizations. There was some structure, some, some structure and there was guidance. There was some guidance there. What caused the lack of guidance in Scotland? The lack of guidance come from when you when you when they took then they destroyed the organizations, you know. So you gotta understand you're dealing with a group of people that once was organized organized and understood, like I said, said, you know, once you get out of down wrong, you know, you got consequences to do. Then now it's no consequences. It's none, you know. It's no what whatever I do, who's gonna stop me from doing it? So when you took that away, you took all the guidelines of law. Everything is ran by law. Everything the trees don't fall off the off, off the trees until a certain time. You know, just for example, if you went to McDonald's and they handed you a burger outside the box, outside a Big Mac, just gave it to you in your hand. There's no way you're gonna take that because it's all about order. You know what I mean? So we got to do everything by order. And uh, when you took, destroyed those organizations, it destroyed the order. And now you get what you get today. How would you say they destroyed the order? By taking, by destroying the community, by, you know, from, from the 80s, when crack cocaine hit, it was all planned to destroy to get what we're getting right now. I do believe that they destroyed us. They, 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 they really destroyed us as a people. And that's one of the things that I don't understand about this country is that you destroy us. You see that our children are dying in the street. You see that our children are dying in the street. And you won't even invest in helping us. And where we are the ones that this country is built off. Billionaires off, they're billionaires off our back, I keep. Billionaires, you know, it's, um, it's a shame that they won't invest into the people that going to bring, keep the economy up. The Mexicans going to go back to Mexico, right? The Chinese people going to go back to China. Our Arab brothers, they're going to go back to their Arab countries. Where are me and you going? Where? We don't got anywhere to go, Aki. So why wouldn't you invest in these people that you know that's going to keep this country going? They're going to put every dime that they get. If you gave a little, you give all the little rap boys, all the money that they get, what are they doing with it? They're putting it right back here in the economy. Help them. Invest into the communities. Invest into the urban communities. Help them. This would change all the madness, all the killings, if you gave them a chance, an opportunity. Let's go back to the right now. Okay, a lot of things are gone right now, but let's work on the four-year-old kids now, the little five-year-old boys. Let's give them, the ones in the urban community, 3,000 words like you give these kids over here, the rich community. Let's give them a 3,000 words, and let's see if they both raise up with the same type of education and the same type of environment, let's see what they, where they come from now. Come from there. 20 years from now, 25 years old, and these two kids got the same education. And let's see how much different that the community be then. It's going to be much different. You know what I mean? So invest in us, and then you will see a change. That's how you can, that's how you can cure this. Would you, what do you think about some of the entertainers that don't invest in that community? I don't, man, I keep, I don't know what they're thinking, you know what I mean? But that's just their thing. I, if it were me, it would be different. I would invest in my community. There's no way that I can have millions, hundreds of millions of dollars and not invest in my community. And a lot of brothers give up charity, but people already, real people know that a lot of charities don't get to the urban community. Real charities don't get so, to so the hood. If, if we know that real charities don't, don't, don't get to the hood, but you more, but for, they're the, more for the entertainers, right? For the entertainers that see all the entertainers from Chicago, think about it. So okay. All the entertainers from Chicago make a gazillion dollars, right? And we know they got families to take care of. That's very important. 
Yeah, but you got a gazillion dollars. Your family going you gonna have money that your all, family gonna have everybody so, to so spend. All I'm saying is, where is the pouring of? Hold on, wait. Let's put every. That's 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 let's put something towards making sure that Chicago gets to a better place. Okay, and your question is. My question is, what should some of these entertainers do from Chicago? Like, you talking, you talking to the they former, should. the former general, uh, one of the former generals, correct? Absolutely. Yeah, one of the former generals of black, black. So some of them, some of them identify with the organization. Right. So, coming from that perspective, I mean, maybe they will listen to you. Say, man, hold on, but one, the G said. You well, no, no, no. I don't want to be considered the G. I don't want to be that, right? I don't want to be considered the G. I don't want to be considered Sadiq Ali. Um, I'm Sadiq, you know what I mean? The one that fears a lot, worship a lot. That's what well, I want to be Kevin considered Gates as, said, right? Kevin I don't Gates listen. Said, listen, I love Kevin Gates. That's my uh, brother, right? He said the G. Listen, again, that's my brother. And I'm telling you what I'm saying, right? Um, I'm going to be for the brother, but whatever he said out of his mouth. I'm not accountable for it. I'm accountable for what I'm saying. I am not the G, right? You ain't the G. No, sir. I am not the G. Okay. I am Sadiq Ali. Again, I'll repeat it again. I am not a Blackstone. I just you come from the tribe try. of Blackstone. Right. I'm not a Blackstone. I'm a Muslim, man. I worship a lot. I don't have any connections with Blackstone. You know what I mean? Anybody that's around me, they Muslims. You know, all the people that I rotate with that used to be Blackstone, we Muslim. We pushing this dean. That's number one thing, all right? That's what we're doing, okay? But as far as with the entertainers, um, man, they really just need to focus on how they can better... What, what number one thing I keep... Put, put yourself in that situation. Take the, the, your, your, take the equation out of that and put themselves in a situation like, damn, I used to be there. I, I, I know what they're going through. I speak that language they're speaking to. So how can you forget? Remember. One of the most powerful scenes I ever seen was King Ron coming to Oak Rock and splitting up a hundred thousand. That wasn't a hundred thousand really ain't a lot of money. Not when you're dealing but, with you gotta tell, not when you gotta pass by like yeah, 20, 30 people. Right. But that's 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 a sign. That's, that's a, a that's a sign, like That's a big sign. And he opened the door to show people by example what you need to do to do things like that. And just say, for instance, if, if, if me and you were entertaining and, and, and they blessed us with a gazillion dollars, you know, you got a gazillion, I got a gazillion. I can give a brother, I just walk up and give one brother $100,000. Do you know what that's going to do for his family? Not just him. It's going to help his children. It's going to help his mom. It's going to help his father. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do a lot of different things. You know what I mean? So... We need to do focus on that. Everybody is just focused on self right now, brother. King Von had to have a secret film. Yeah. It was put together in two, three, two or three days. I'm doing that. You were a keeper. I had something to do with it, but you were a key person involved. How did he lie, man? A lot's blessing. Making sure that he was buried. At a secret location, so nobody can disrespect right. this site. Right. How how was that information? How did you get appointed to the position? Well, um, like I say, his family, brother Hassan, you know what I mean, Abdul Haq, you know, and um, like I said, he came down to the master, the master got his son, you know, the master that I attend to. So you know, they wanted us to be one the uh, faces of his funeral, you know what I mean, to push this dean and his his moms gave us the blessing as well. Um, so that's how we got to be the key because he came to our master. Like he, he was really trying, you know what I mean? I only, only want to judge Vaughn off the good things that I know about him, which I don't really know any bad things about. Like I say, I just know him to be a, yeah, he had a, a, a beautiful person when it came to him talking to me. So King Vaughn was buried by Muslims? Buried by Muslims. Yeah, he had a Muslim janazah, Muslim funeral. So that's why I really want to push this back to that he is Muslim. You know what I mean? But um, I don't want to look. I don't. I'm not the type of person that look at negative. Oh man, you know you're not Muslim. Why are we doing this? No man, they hate. 
if this is what it is, we're going to push this thing. We're going to make it right. Well, his, uncle, his uncle said he was Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And if his uncle said he was Muslim, then he was Muslim, then we're doing the right thing for a Muslim. Question. Um, why was it important for King Bond to be buried in a secret location? Well, I can't, I can't answer that. I don't know why was it important. I think it was more important to, for safety reasons. You know what I mean? Um, it was more important. It was a wish of his family to have that. So that's more important than anything. When moms give the law, anybody, moms is law. So when she laid the law down, that's it. Point blank period. We don't question, we don't ask nothing about it. Moms is the law. And we support her law. Okay. Okay, any questions? I was just <clears throat> thinking about how you refer to your previous involvement with the Blackstone organization and how I feel like many times when people adopt a new identity, they become a born again Christian, they accept Islam, whatever mm -hmm. it is. A lot of times they cut themselves off completely from that which they came from. Okay. I and Sometimes, you know, it's just because they feel like it's out of necessity because of what they came from is might have just been so traumatic that they really need a fresh start. But okay. it's, it's, it seemed like you found, a, a to me when I hear it, you found a good balance where you, you're not forgetting about the forgotten and at the same time, you understand that there's a new identity that you, a new path that you have to accept that's connected to who you are, but that's going to take you to a different place. Right. How did, like, I want to hear, like, how did you even come to that, that conclusion? Well, okay, just most like most of us, when I came, when I, I, I came home from the penitentiary in 2006, right? When I was in the penitentiary, man, I, I, I studied the dean, I studied Islam. And um, I fell in love with it, right? And then I came home, and I was like, man, the neighborhood, man, they need, this is needed. So I went, instead of like you see a lot of people, they'll shy away and cut that out, that old off. But I'm like, they got to be introduced to this. They need to know about this. They need to hear this. They need to really to understand that you can do anything that everybody else is doing by doing wrong, by doing right. And I pushed that, man. I pushed that. And it was a struggle at first. But I remember when I came home, I remember I was on a bus. You know what I mean? And went from driving fancy cars, now I'm being on a bus. But I'm still pushing this dean. And Allah had blessed me, man, with a nice little job. And um, I remember I bought my first car. It was 2006. And I bought a 2006 Jaguar. Right? I'm fresh home from the joint. No money, but Allah has blessed me to put this Jaguar in my name. And I'm coming through the neighborhood. They like, man, this dude ain't doing nothing. What the hell is he doing in this Jaguar? But it wasn't for uh, uh, the media front or stunning or that. It was just to lead by example. Like, I look what I'm on. I got a kufi on. I'm walking around with doves on. I got button downs on. I'm jumping out. I'm saying, Slam alaikum. I ain't doing handshakes no more. And look what I have. Look what Allah has blessed me with. You can do the same thing. And um, eventually, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot went. He stopped. I, I stopped moving all around the world. A lot took me all around the world. I keep. I've been in so many different places, and I showed this to the show the brothers that this is what we're missing. This Motown thing, what we got going on, we in bondage with this. You know, yeah, it's cool, whatever. But we are in bondage. This is not where it's at. Let's grow. Let's go see the world. It's so many different things in the world to see. And I think that was a light that the, a lot of the young brothers and a lot of people that looked up to me was like, man, Sadiq, he really doing it. He really doing his thing. He really doing his Islam thing. And I remember hearing brothers years later, and they always to say about me, like, oh, man, what's up with Sadiq? Oh, man, he a Muslim. And I was like, what did they say about me? Like, they say you're Muslim. I said, look, if they can say whatever else they want to say about me, as long as they say I'm a Muslim, I'm good. I'm good. As long as they put Islam when they say my name, alhamdulillah. Where was, um, where do you 
you feel like you went through this this pivotal transformation? What part of your life? Like I said, I, when when I went to the penitentiary, it was it was like, man, I this 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 penitentiary life is not what I want to do. I can't. I won't go back to jail. This is not it. This is can't be life for me. This can't be it. And uh, it was it was bad was at your, that point. I'm sorry. Was your journey like similar to like so like a lot of our brothers, you know, a lot of, a lot of our brothers and sisters that went to 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 jail, right? They went. They've been to the penitentiary. Do you mind sharing with us like what led you there? Drugs, brother. Drugs. <laughs> drugs, drugs, brother. Drugs led me to the penitentiary. Um, drugs. And what's crazy is it was all it, it was um, it was all the decree of a lot because when I got caught with drugs, I was on the road, and um, the car that I was in wasn't my car. It wasn't registered to me. So they really couldn't pin the drugs on me. But I gave the police. They was asking me my name, and I wouldn't tell them. Right, so they charged me with obstructing the justice, but they couldn't charge me with the drugs, so they just sent me to the joint for that. You know. Wow. 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 But you, you can't. I don't want to say wow in a bad way. So like again, like I said earlier, that you can look at things from when you were doing it. So I can look at that and say, Alhamdulillah. Because if I never would have went through that, I never went through the transaction where Allah sent man way solve his problems at best. And I had to go to the penitentiary to solve a problem. I went there, solved my problem, came out to be one of the most in, in, the most intelligent brothers that comes to together and push this dean in a way that the youth can understand. Do you feel like, so you went to jail, you, you were convicted and sentenced for obstructing justice? Yes. Do you think your, your sentence for obstructing justice I was, was similar with, with you at the same time that you would have gotten for the drugs that they found you with? Maybe not as harsh as they probably would have rocked me if they got me for those drugs. But um, it was enough time for me to get my act together. And that's what I did. I'm thinking along the lines of like Al Capone or like, you know, somebody goes to jail for tax evasion because right. it's the only one thing, thing that you can get you, can on. Get you on right and um but like i said it was a beauty it was a beauty you know i met a lot of good muslims in jail a lot of good muslims and they helped me and everybody was saying the same thing they was like man you know everybody said they're gonna rock this thing when they get out listen now i looked at the brothers and said listen bro i never have did anything when i get out of here i'm gonna push this thing and i remember i came home and it was about Man, 60 to 70 brothers at my mom's house. And they was trying to figure out, you know, what the movement that I was on. And I was like, man, I'm pushing this thing, man. And I made slot in front of them. And um, not to take anything away from the brothers of the neighborhood, but they were more into what they was going on. It was like, I was by myself. You know, I'm on a bus. This is Sadiq on a bus. And, um, but it was a alhamdulillah, and I swallowed that pill, and, and Allah blessed me for that sacrifice, because I could have did anything I wanted to do in that neighborhood. Still to this day, probably, I can do whatever I want to do over there, but I, Islam is where it's at. I don't want nothing to do with that. I want to do what Allah says. I want to do push what Allah says. I want to do more right. I've been more successful being a Muslim than I ever was doing in the streets. So um, I don't take nothing away from anything that happened to me. Right, right now you're a businessman. Oh yes, humdiddy lie. Yeah, multiple businesses. Humdiddy lie. Right. Yeah. And um, you know how did how did you get into the world of business? Well, I've always wanted to be in business. I got a lot. Of, I got a couple of Arab brothers that I got to thank for that. You know, what I mean, my brother, one of the brothers, Sufian, um, Bassam. You know, what I mean, even Bassam. And a, a, a special brother happened, man. You know, he, he he really showed me, you know, how to be when it comes to business. These are Arab brothers. They really took a liking to me and showed me how, when it comes to business, how to push it. You know, we did it for years together, and but once it was time to go on, they never stopped me from doing my own thing. They encouraged me to do my own thing, and so I always be indebted to those brothers for that. 
helping me do my business and um, push that business the way that it is. Now, you spoke earlier about Abdul Hop, which is a brother also known as Big Dirt. We've had him on. We the only we the only podcast he's ever been on. You know that's our brother. So uh, Abdul Hop. <laughs> Abdul Hop. What would, you, what would you when we say that name? What's, what what comes to mind? The Imam, a leader, um, a beautiful individual, our key, that um, he's bluntly with his dean, you know what I mean? I mean, he checked me on a couple of occasions on some things, you know what I mean? But he just bluntly, and he's unapologetic when it comes to this dean. And I love that about him, you know what I mean? I love that about him. And he's always been supportive of anything that, you know, I wanted to do. He's never, you know, uh, made me feel any other way but beautiful, man. He's a beautiful brother. You know what I mean? Like I said, he's an imam. I consider him as a leader. You know what I mean? I will, uh, one, the one that I will follow is him. He's one of the ones that I will follow, for sure. Because I know he's gonna lead me into the right, right, right path. He's not gonna go astray. And I congratulate him. He's been home a long time and um, he's still on the top of his dean. And it's a lot of brothers that come home and don't be on their dean, especially with People with his status, you know. Um, so I take my hat off to I take my hat off to Abdul Haq. I love that brother. That's my guy. Alhamdulillah. What do you think it is about that? Like you mentioned it a couple of times, where people didn't expect you to stay on Dean once you got home, mm -hmm. right? Like, what is it about that that expectation being so low? Because I look at it like staying on Dean is also uh, uh, like a like a like a metaphor for just other positive behavior too, right? Like not getting back into the streets for whatever reason, right? Like what do you think it is about like that expectation that you're gonna come home and then you're gonna just get right back into it? You're gonna forget the dean. You're gonna forget all the positivity that you you acquired while you were in of, of, of rebuilding yourself. Um, I don't. I. I, I, I. I, I don't want to say this and hurt any brother's feelings that came home and fell off their dean, but it's the truth of reality. Um, they're weak, Aki. They're very weak. Um, you have to be strong with this dean. You got to understand that the shaitan is standing over you while you are asleep to be able to figure a way to, to destroy you, to do, destroy anything that you're trying to build. So you come home and then the shaitan dress you with the things that you love. You know, women. Money, you throw trial after trial. Man, I can't do this. I ain't got no money. I was making ten thousand dollars a week. Now here I'm making five hundred a week, six hundred a week. So it's like, okay, why would you do that? Go on, jump back over. So it's just a matter of being weak. You know what I mean? And uh, if you really follow this dean, really, really follow the dean. I don't want to take credit from anybody. I want to say that you're not a Muslim or you don't follow the dean. But if you do what Allah says, you do patience, and it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. I yeah, I bear witness. Like, I bear witness that it's gonna work out. It sounds like you had to have a lot of personal strength. To a lot of humble yourself to be on a bus, be a, on the train. A lot of patience, Aki. A lot of patience and a lot of support within the people that really love you. You know, a lot of support from close people. Man, you don't gotta do that. Even with the millions of people that's on the side of the fence that's telling you, what are you doing? Then you got people that's close to you that's saying, man. I, 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 I look up to you. I want to follow you to do this. Whatever, you're doing right. Keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Number one, my mom. My mom, like, you know, she was like, man, look, when you was in the streets, you was like one of the best that did, was in there doing it. And I know if you're doing this, you're going to do it to your best. So continue to do your best at it. And I did my best at it. And my mom took Shahada, alhamdulillah, you know, um, of me doing my best and pushing the dean. You know, so I, 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 I definitely... It's weakness when it comes to the brothers that come home and you fall straight off into the doing it. What, what were you doing? What did you take? A lot of man, what he saw was problems at best. So you solved the problem in the penitentiary, came back home to do something different. Then you now you're back in the penitentiary. Why? Because you still got a problem to solve. And that's the home that he lied for you because you could have been a lot, could have, you could have returned to a lot in that, that madness that you was doing. Sometimes Brother Foster, they got 30, 40 years off them not holding on to the rope of a lot and pushing that dean. But 
if you hold on to the rope of Allah, I bear witness, I'm a living witness, that it's going to work out. Yeah, it sounds like you had a lot, like a deep introspective process. Where Absolutely. You, you dug deep, and your reasons for it, for making that change in your life was your own personal reasons. My like own you reasons. Were sincere right. and honest with yourself about where you what where you were, what you didn't have, what you wanted, your shortcomings, like that. Because you have to have a, a a sincere level of conviction to still to still be moving how you moving years later. Right. Since you've been out. Yeah, like I say, you know, I got I got um um support. You know, from man, good people. You know what I mean. You know, um, my my old man Rome. You know, he he supported me in a lot of things that I had going on. You know, and uh, uh, you know, Rome is a, a a beautiful brother. I always got to speak highly of the brother Rome because um, he definitely was one of the ones that helped me get to the spot that I want to be at. As your a man, father, your father. yeah, as a man, you know. So, I'm does, your, does your father what? Does your father have some history in the organization as well? Oh yeah, man. He's a he's a he's a name. He's a he's a he's a he's a he's a brand name, and uh, one of the most anybody that can speak of him, they're gonna say that he's a beautiful person. He's a beautiful individual. Was he was he uh was he attached to the organization? Um, maybe Jeff was he. No, he, he, you know, he was more, into, he was more to, um, uh, when, you know, the, when, 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 when Malik was going to jail, you know, he came, they, they came out to that group, you know, so, like I said, it was in the 90s, he was doing this, you know, when Malik was gone, but he was definitely a, a main factor, and uh, we support that all the way, he's a beautiful person, he's a Muslim now, and he would say the same thing that I'm saying right now, that, uh, you know, we're not stones no more, we're Muslims. And we fear a lot and we worship a lot. And um, a lot of things that happen to me in my life is, uh, man, that brother, I have a lot of to thank, thank him about. I could never forget him or, you know, yeah, he's a really, really, really good person. He's a really big person in my life, uh, for sure. You know, what's it was one key. Of, what's one of the... Um What's one of the most unforgettable lessons that he's taught you? Or when you think about your dad. One of the most forgivable lessons that unforgivable lessons unforgettable lessons that he's taught me was always be myself. You know, uh, I just talked to him the other day. He was like, Man, you got the new in your eyes, you got the new in your light. You know, no you got that light, I push it. You know, nobody's gonna be able to challenge that. You got something that no people don't have. You know, that they, they yarn for it. You have it. Elias gave you that. And um, he always taught me that, you know what I mean? He always taught me different things. He taught me that people have different ways of apologizing, you know? So, you know, you might deal with a person and he might be like, you know, I'll argue with you one minute and you might call me and be like, hey, you, you man, you, you hungry? You ain't say I'm sorry, but you said often did I want something to eat. Of course you're sorry if you want to buy me a hamburger, you know what I mean? So, um a lot of things that he's taught me that I'll be able to take to the next level of life. And uh, he's, you know, he always told me that, man, I want you to be better than me and push better than me. And uh, yeah, he's, a, he, yeah, he's, he's, he's it, I can I got to give that to him. There's no, you know, he's always been 100 and truthful with me. He never left my side. He always supported anything I was on. He always pushed at me to do right. You know, even when I was in the doing and pushing drugs, he was like, man, I don't really want that for you. You know, but, you know, it is what it is. But now that we're pushing his dean, he's my biggest fan. And he want me to go so much further than what I'm doing, what I can see. And when you got people like that that can push you to make you go further, and want, and you can, they can see further for you, and then you can be able to be like, no, I might can do this, I might can do that, they can see. And there's a lot of people that support me. A lot of people that look up to me and honor me, so I got to stay on the straight path. So, do you have uh, any businesses that you can share with us now that you would man, like to promote listen, for the channel? Man, listen, I got um, Bar Here Imports, you know what I mean? It's the Islamic store. 
Alhamdulillah, you come get all your Islamic, you know, gear right there, man. We right next to the masjid at 323 East Persian Road. Me and my man, Abdul Jalil, another beautiful person that Allah has blessed me with, bro. A partner like that, you know, it got to be Allah has blessed you with me. So I got to trust the gift that Allah gave me. That's a trusted gift that he gave me in that brother. So, um, and we trying to, you know, we got a, I got a uh, cell phone store at 9923 South Halstead. I got another store that I'm working on at 5411 South Ashland. That's in Motown. And I'm trying to open up a location right there so the brothers can be able to come and, you know, understand that this is what we're doing. This is what you can get out of Motown. And that's next to a mass yet. Our brother, um, uh, Wakita, he just came home and... Alhamdulillah, he pushing this dean, you know what I mean, that's a, uh, he's a big, um, a big, big, big thing for me, man, he's, I'm so proud of him, what he's doing, you know, so pushing this dean. So, so, you're talking right now about Akita, uh, brother, uh, Imam Malik, Jeff Ford's son. Absolutely, absolutely, a beautiful brother, some man, people, he pushed this dean. Would, some people would say Prince Wakita. No, no, we're going to call him yeah, the no, Mustafa. We're going to yeah. call him Mustafa, right? Mustafa. That's what his name Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to call him what he want to be called. The Mustafa. So, so people know now and refer to him as, as the Mustafa. Mustafa. As uh, You know, he's the Mustafa. He's a beautiful person. And he has came home. And he's opened up a mask yet. And uh, he opened up a location where the brothers can come pray and learn more about Allah. When he could be doing other different things. He could be doing so many different things, but Allah has blessed him to hold on to this thing. And um, even from jail, man, he always was an uplifting in this thing. You know, you can hear it in his voice. And everybody's like, oh, man, when he come home, he ain't going to be on that. You know, that's Waikita. He ain't going to be on that, bro. That brother going to do what he, you know. And um, alhamdulillah, man, he been, he been standing on what his words was. And I love him for that, you know, to be able to come, to be able to, Push the dean in Motown and, you know, try my best to push it, push it. And then he comes home and he pushes me up. Instead of not pushing me out the way, he pushes me up to show the people that this is the same thing I'm on, what's the deep been on. And we do it. We, 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 we shine a light together. And when you look at us, you see Islam. You see Muslims. You know, despite what everybody else wants to say, you don't see the dean when you see us. You know, we pushing that dean in Motown. This is Waikita. This is the Malik's son. And, you know, he could do whatever he want to do, but he's pushing out Islam. Allah is going to bless him, huh? Tremendously. So people can get a full understanding. They may not know his past. Or, like, sometimes, like, we know because we're from Chicago. We, we've heard of him. Some people... Some people would, would look at him almost as an urban legend in the sense. Like, man, well, 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 how about this? How about this, right? I'll say this for y'all, right? This is Shy Podcast, and you hear it from Sadiq Ali personally. I'm going to uh, uh, set up a situation where you can question Marquita yourself, right? And he can sit in this chair that I'm at, and you guys can ask him all the type of questions that you want to ask him. Okay. Okay, inshallah. Nice. I can make that happen for you, Brother Ali, because you've always been a beautiful brother to me. Alhamdulillah. And, um, you know, yeah, I can put him in this chair. You can ask him all the questions that you need, you know. Yeah. Especially that you're Muslim, he's going to run over here. Right. <laughs> in closing, I would like to say that we have to stay peaceful at all costs, by all means. Okay? No man condition will change unless he changes his condition. I'm a one that living proof that I changed my condition for the best of me. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm going to get to where I need to be.